Hi everyone, I'm Pete Bigelow from AOL Autos. Today we're helping to mark the 50th anniversary of the JFK assassination here at the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan, where they have the limousine the president was riding in when he was shot in Dallas. Joining me is Matt Anderson, the curator of transportation here at the Henry Ford. Matt, tell us about the vehicle here behind us and how it became in the collection here at the Henry Ford. Well, up until oh, the late 80s, early 90s, uh, the White House used Lincolns in presidential service and they actually leased them from the Lincoln Motor Company. At the time, this car was used and then retired in 1977 because it was leased. Uh, the White House just sent it back to Lincoln. Ford didn't have any sort of corporate museum, so they actually sent it to Henry Ford Museum here. So it's been here since 1978. I think one of the interesting things about the limousine here that most people don't know is that following the assassination, it was put back into service. Yeah, a lot of people are surprised at that, but there was a very practical reason for that. Uh, the president needs a parade car, he needs transportation to get to places, so it was just faster to rebuild this car than it would have been to start from scratch and build a car from the ground up. So yes, they very, very quickly in the space of about five months uh, disassembled this car, tore it down, then put it back together with armor this time, armor plating, special protection for the president, and then most notably this permanent roof on there. So it, it's not a convertible anymore as it was in Dallas. The roof is there all the time. This car looks very different than it did in Dealey Plaza in uh, 1963. Obviously it's black now as opposed to midnight blue, and as you mentioned, uh, there's, there's a roof on it now, whereas it was convertible then. Uh, what are some of the other changes that are not as visible? If you look at the front end of the car, this, this interests me because this had been modified even before Kennedy was assassinated. Uh, the car is a 1961 model and if, if you know your Lincolns you know that the 61 model had a different looking grill than this. When 62 rolled around they actually dropped in the 62 grill to keep the car current and that's a, a great little trick they use with these vehicles you know to keep them up to date if they can change a front end or something they will do that. When it was at Dallas it had a couple of red flasher lights that, that you might recall built right into the bumper. Uh, at some point after that they remove those flasher lights, put on just a regular bumper, and actually swapped out the bright headlights for the flasher. So a little cleaner look on the front end. But you know, for all the changes in the car, I still think the front end is maybe the element that looks the most like the car did at Dallas. I mean, if you see that, you can think, yeah, this, this is it, this is the vehicle. We actually have uh, four different presidential limousines and then a, a presidential carriage before that. Our carriage belonged to Teddy Roosevelt. He would have used it uh, when he was president. The first presidential automobile we have belonged to Franklin Roosevelt. It's his Sunshine Special, which arguably is the first presidential limousine to sort of have a, a place in the public conscious. You know, people associated that car with uh, uh, FDR. It's also interesting because it's the first presidential vehicle to be armored, but it was not armored until after Pearl Harbor. And surprisingly, they did not armor the next car which came along, which was a Lincoln Bill for President Truman and used by Truman, Eisenhower, and actually Kennedy in the first years. And that car is known as the bubble top because it's got this rather interesting plastic plexiglass roof on it, which allows the president to be seen but protects him from bad weather. And then of course we have the uh, Kennedy limousine here. And then our most recent vehicle is a 1972 Lincoln, which is most associated with President Reagan. It's the car into which he was getting when he was shot in 1981. Well, Matt, thank you very much for joining us today. This has certainly been an education here at the Henry Ford, and I'm sure you're busy here in the weeks ahead as we near the, the anniversary of the assassination. Yes, uh, a lot of events coming up to uh, commemorate the 50th anniversary, and uh, we're looking forward to sharing this object with the public. Thank you.